Hello everyone, welcome. This is a new episode of Fabric Espresso. And today we have a new guest. Akshay Tayal is joining us directly from the Fabric Product Engineering Group to talk about the newest innovation that we shipped, Fabric Runtime 1.3, which is based on Apache Spark 3.5. So before, Akshay, as this is the first time you are joining us, could you please take a moment and introduce yourself and tell us more. What are you working on? What are the features you are delivering and building with your team? Thank you, Esther, for having me here on Expresso. And uh, I'm glad to share my uh, point of view and my experience on what I have developed uh, recently in Maxo Fabric. I would uh, engage with the engineering team here and develop multiple runtime support where users can easily switch the runtimes and experience the beauty of each runtime, whatever they want to experience pretty easily. And on top of that, I releases new runtimes. Recently, I'm working on releasing Spark 3.5 runtime, and it's a great success. And I'll talk about that as well during our talk today. Awesome. So let's proceed directly to this innovation. So in Fabric, we ship runtime, which is the fundamental element of all data engineering, data ingestion as well, and data science workloads. The runtime is based on Apache Spark. In the past, we released a runtime 1.0, then 1.1, 1.2, and now it's a turn for 1.3, based on Apache Spark 3.5. Can you tell us more? What are the ingredients, so components of this runtime? If I talk about Collectively as a whole, there are a lot of components we build as part of our runtime. It could be, I'll tell in very generic terms, like it's AI, it's data engineering, and obviously data science and, data and AI are different, right? So it's data science as well, and machine learning as well. It's huge. You can explore in many areas you want to. And Microsoft Fabric provides all these functionalities seamlessly into it. Now, if I talk about specifically about, let's say, Fabric runtime 1.3. So we are delivering Spark runtime 3.5 and Delta 3.1 in this. So user will have a lot more features to explore. And uh, we are providing a complete uh, data science library, which is part of the runtime itself. User can explore and write their code right in any language they want, maybe the Python or Java or Scala. It could be anything and explore uh, the beauty of our product. Awesome. So I want to add a comment just to make it clear that we are taking the open source because Apache Spark, because of the name Apache, it indicates that Spark is an open source project run by Apache Foundation. So we, as a product, we are taking the open source library, a new version 3.5 of Apache Spark, and then adding a lot of, I think that our documentation states that 110 components with almost a thousand of different libraries into every new runtime version. We make sure that all of them are compatible. We are at the end building, baking this runtime and releasing into multiple phases. For runtime 1.3, we release experimental public preview and now full scope of public preview. And we are on the way to make it named as GA, so ready for production workloads. Actually, as you drove the experimental public preview of this runtime, and it, it was the very first time we decided to limit the scope and deliver a new runtime version with the newest Spark, with the newest Delta, with the newest Python, as soon as possible. But can you tell us more, what was the scope and what decisions led to releasing that runtime. This beautiful runtime that we are delivering this time, we have uh, divided that into multiple stages. And those stages were like experimental and then the public preview and we're going to be GA pretty soon on this one. So the scope of experimental was to give a basic prototype to the user so they can right away get into the latest available technology in the market and start using that. And that is Spark 3.5. On top of that, the latest Delta, which is available, that was 3.1. And you would love to hear that, that our customers truly love it. They directly jumped onto it, started exploring the experimental runtime, and they were amazed to see the results. 
we started adding a lot more new libraries as well to it for data science and adding a lot more new functions and our customers truly love the complete scope which we delivered for experimental. Also, we had the enhanced security as well. So in experimental, we take extra caution that the security comes first, the privacy comes first, and all that should be delivered right from stage one for the fabric in uh, runtime that we are delivering. So keeping that in mind, we deliver the best to our customers. It makes sense. So can you show us how to change the runtime? So can you show us how multiple runtime support works? Sure. So that's how our Microsoft Fabric Data Engineering UI looks like. And I have just created a workspace for our demo today. And there are two ways to switch the runtimes. And it's very, very easy, very seamlessly integrated in our product. So what you have to do is, let's say, you have to update the Spark runtime at the workspace level so that all the artifacts may be any notebook or SJD or it could be any other job. All those should use the same runtime. Then I would suggest you to use or switch the runtime using the workspace settings option. So for this, you have to open the workspace like this and there's an option called workspace settings. You go to workspace settings and scroll down and you will see data engineering science and there under the spark settings there is something called as environment tab and in the environment tab you will see a drop down named spark runtime version and in this you will see all the available runtimes in our product so you see 1.1 with spark 3.3 1.2 with spark 3.4 1.3 with spark 3.5 Let's say currently I'm using 1.3 in my runtime, which is the latest one available and it's in public preview. Let me switch it to 1.2 because let's say I want to go to a GA runtime. So I just choose it and it just shows me some information here, which is useful and gives me a link to the runtime documentation also to understand it better. And I can just click save. It will just take a few seconds, see how quick it is. And you are already all set to use runtime 1.2. Now let's just validate that in our notebook and I'll open a notebook here and this is my notebook and I'll check what runtime I see for this notebook. So I just click this drop down at the top. It says that at the workspace level, uh, we have runtime 1.2 selected. So I'll just select this one and I'll start using this. Very easy, very simple. And uh, it's starting a new session in the notebook. It will just take very, very less time, just few seconds and you'll, it'll print the runtime which we are using. And there you go, the session started in three seconds and you have the Spark runtime printed here. This is 3.4 and that's what we have chosen. Fabric 1.2 is using Spark 3.4. Can you demo how to switch to runtime, the newest one, 1.3, one more time? 1.3, all right, sure. So let's go back to the workspace settings and let's choose the most recent one from the data engineering science, go back to the Spark settings and go to the environment tab here. And let's choose the most recent available, that's 1.3. And you can see the documentation also if you need some information and you can click save here. Now, once it's saved, see how fast it is. Just it's a matter of few seconds, not even seconds, I should say. And let's go back to our, our notebook and let's quickly test this one. So if you want to validate what runtime is uh, currently available or set on a workspace level, it's runtime 1.3 public preview, right? And this has Spark 3.5 and Delta 3.1. Let me validate that. Let me start the session with my notebook. And this code will print the Spark version I'm using to run this notebook at this time. And see, the session started quickly in just four seconds. And uh, there you go. You see the version of Spark is 3.5 and that's what is the version used in our Fabric 1.3 runtime. That's awesome. So we can change, we can upgrade, we can, if needed, downgrade always without any problems. The thumb rule is that for production workloads, we should always use the latest GA runtime version, which is at that point runtime 1.2. Soon we'll make and name a runtime 1.3 GA, then it's ready for production workloads with a full SLAs. We are following the same rules as entire Azure is following. Now, Akshay, can you tell us more why we should use a runtime 1.3? What are the features 
worth of switching to that version? Our runtime 1.3 is massive. It is providing a lot more improvements over runtime 1.2. And if I start listing down, it's a huge list, but I'll walk through the most important ones. So the few important ones is like there are a few new functions which are added, the SQL functions, right? And I found those amazing because I love financial numbers, right? And I love numbers. And I always wanted to print numbers in a very specific format. Let's say with specific uh, digit separations, let's say with the comma or with the decimals or made be a currency or whatever format you want to. And there was no straightforward way of doing it till now. In Spark 3.5, for the financial analyst, they have added this feature. They can simply use two var, provide the format, and print the numbers the way they want to. And it works seamlessly, and it works beautifully for all the numbers, even for the big numbers as well. So that's one of the great features we have recently introduced. Another one is the HLL sketching. So this is a hyperlog log function, which is added. Last year, I had to use it. We all, let's say, if you are analyzing any data, you always have to see how many unique values is there in that data, right? And last year, I was doing some similar analysis. I couldn't find any such function in Spark, and I was surprised to see that. But this year, they have added this function, and it's added with a very good performance, and it's running really fast. The demo you see, they are simply added, like you can put the values, or you can pull data from your tables as well and just create a sketch and just run the estimate on top of it and it will give you how many unique values you have beautifully. Uh, done. That's awesome because I can pass uh, not only values uh, as an array or some form of array, but also I can provide a column or I can provide a table just for the entire data set. Awesome. Yes. awesome. And, and on top of that, it, it's all distributed function. So, it will run very quickly, it, uh, whatever the size of data will be. It's, it's using Spark Beauty end-to-end. -end. So it's uh, super amazing. And then uh, what I see that they have added this identifier uh, clause as well. So what is identifier clause is that, let's say if I say six star from a table name and, sub and the hackers started using these identifiers, let's say the table names and the column names to hack into your databases as well. So Spark came up with this thing called as identifier clause that protects you from SQL injection attacks. And now you have it and you need not worry about SQL injection via the identifiers in, in your product anymore. And that's another beauty which is added. I wanted to ask about user-defined table function. Before the experimental release, I was going through the Spark 3.5 release notes, open source release notes. So here, one more point. We ship Apache Spark with its beauty, plus we are shipping our own native optimizations. Like by native, I'm talking about integration with ADLS Gen 2, uh, integration with entire Fabric ecosystem. Similar is happening and happened in the past for Synapse. But uh, when I was going through the release notes for Apache Spark, I found user-defined table functions as the most appealing because it looked for me that I can apply a function to the entire table immediately. Can you tell us more how it works? Yes, and, and Spark 3.5 provides you that opportunity, Esther. So let me explain about that. There are two things. One is the UDFs and another is the UDTFs, right? So UDF is something like that returns a scalar value, a single value. UDTFs, in contrary, returns a complete data set or a complete table in itself. And that's the beauty of it, right? And UDFs has always been there, but there is always a demand of using UDTFs because we have to return a, a result set from some operations that we do as a whole in a single unit and then return the result set to the user for further analysis. Here is a simple example that I've taken to explain how exactly this is coded and, and this works. So let me scroll up a little. If you, uh, let's say I have added one class, it's in Python that says that this is the eval function. This is a, the signature that how we used to define it. And the yield denotes the row that you are creating that will be returned for this. It could be a select star from some table as well. So it's just a simple example that I'm taking here. So what I'm returning a row with two columns Let's say this is a value for column one and this is the value for column two, right? 
and then I'm converting this class into a uh, UDTF. So it says my uh, UDF and then I'm creating it as a UDTF, putting a class name here and defining the return result set type, which has two columns of string type C1 and C2. And then when you say my UDF dot show, it, it prints the output like this, like a data set dot uh, data frame dot show we do. Similarly, we are doing a UDTF dot show and you see two columns in a tabular format and the output here. So that's the beauty of this one. And it's not just like you need to use it as a PySpark. You can use the same in format of SQL as well. So if you see here, I'm just registering the UDF, uh, UDTF like this and then using it into spark.sql command, putting like six star from my UDTF function and then it's printing the complete result set. So see how easy it is to use and code. And it's like seamlessly available also to be used. Akshay, thanks a lot for doing the demo. We will dig into the details of Apache Spark in the upcoming episodes. And for those who are watching us, remember to leave a question, leave a comment and hit the like button. And until the next time, happy exploring a runtime 1.3 and using the latest features that are coming directly from Apache Spark 3.5 and Delta Lake 3.1. Thanks a lot.